The wolf protected the little girl to the last, lying next to her. Three years ago, my beloved nephew Melina passed away. I was not at the funeral. I was just taken to the army. I only know that my niece died of cardiac arrest. My older sister Melina gave birth out of a wedlock. She was a single mother. Melina was born a healthy girl. Our, pa our parents dotted on their granddaughter, so she grew up as the sweetest child, always laughed, talked, was in a good mood, rarely got sick. But at the age of three, Melina fell silent. She was completely silent. She just stopped talking and started having nightmares. She often screamed in her sleep, cried, but did not tell what was wrong with her. As Vika, my sister, said, there was a feeling that her lips were sealed because Melina had no reason to be silent. The sister talked with the doctors, and they said that it was possible that someone in the kindergarten offended Melina, because children at this age are very vulnerable, so she fell silent due to stress. Vika decided to take the girl closer to nature, to rest. Maybe Melina's condition will get better. Our grandfather lives near Krasnodar, and has been working as a forester for 10 years. In the forest where he lives, there is a very small village, in which there are only 12 houses, and only 6 of them are active. The grandfather himself lived in the forest, but he also had a private house in his village, so he gave that house to Vika and her daughter to rest. But even after several weeks of rest, Melina did not feel better. She still slept badly and was silent. And finally, this is what happened. During the walks through the forest, my grandfather found a badly wounded wolf cub. One of the animals bit him very hard. Vika was a veterinarian. That's why the grandfather brought her a wolf cub for treatment. He said he didn't want to mess with them. Of course, my sister, as a person who loves animals and knows how to find a common ground with them, took the animal into the house. She was not even afraid that it was a predator, since the wolf cub was so wounded and exhausted that it even barely moved. In just two days, Vega set the wolf cub to its feet. Slowly limping, he could already walk. In addition, my sister really loved that the wolf had a positive effect on her daughter. Melina began to warm up. She smiled and even slept all night without waking up without screaming. A couple more days have passed, and the result was still positive. The child slept well. Vika decided to look into her daughter's room to see if Melina was sleeping peacefully. Opening the door to the room, she was a little surprised. Gray, that's how they named the wolf, was sitting on Melina's feet on the bed, staring intently at one point on the wall. Vika thought that it was Melina who brought Gray to sleep in her room, but since it was still a predator, her sister decided to take him out of the room and put him to sleep in the hallway. But as soon as she touched him, he softly growled. Vika, shocked by such impudence, abruptly took him in her arms, carried him into the hallway, laying him on a pillow, and decided to sit for a while in the kitchen and drink tea, in the case if Grey will enter her daughter's room again. But literally 10 minutes later, she again heard Grey's soft growl and approached him. He stood next to the door to Melina's room, growling. Vika opened the door, and Gray ran in and jumped on the bed and again took the same position as before. In total, Vika and Melina lived in this house for a year. Gray lived with them, although he was already an adult and independent wolf. He knew the forest perfectly. He also hunted very well, but every evening he returned home and spent the night in Melina's room. He did the same thing every day, sat at her feet on the bed and stared at one point, periodically growling. Vika did not mind at all, because after Gray began to spend the nights with Melina, her nightmare stopped. During this year, she became an ordinary child who played, smiled, and slept well. The only thing that was wrong, Melina still was silent. In the end, my sister decided to return back to the city closer to civilization and her beloved work. Melina felt great. Perhaps she did not have enough communication with children. Vika was not worried about Gray. She knew that this was a very strong beast. He would survive without her help. As soon as my sister returned to the city, Melina's nightmares returned, but with a vengeance. She practically did not sleep. The girl faded in a matter of days. Vika has just begun to understand how it is when you see a child dying in front of your eyes. The sister was in complete despair. She didn't know what to do, how to help her daughter. Four days after their arrival home, Melina was gone. What happened to Vika is beyond words. For a very long time, she could not believe that her daughter was gone. It was as if the soul had been taken out of her body. My mother said that after the death of Melina, she went to some woman and she explained everything, saying that some force had actually come for Vika, but Melina herself, without realizing it, took the fall. But God, seeing that something wants to destroy an innocent soul, sent her a guardian angel. As we realized, 
Gray defended Melina until she was taken away. Vika is still reproaching herself. She went back to that village and told that Gray still comes to Melina's room and sits on her bed. And in the morning, he leaves for the forest.